Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about inter-country marriage and divorce. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only, not for professional legal opinion. Neither this presentation is a substitute for professional legal opinion. For legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. In this video, I am going to discuss about intercountry, marriages, and divorce. Intercountry is basically one of the marriage party is a Indian and the other party is a foreigner. So, in this video, I will be discussing what are the issues, what are the precautions to be taken, and how the Supreme Court of India has discussed with regard to inter-country marriage or overseas marriage or NRI marriage in India. As we know, the international travel has become a norm nowadays. Many people visit abroad for the purpose of education, tourism, for job and various other purposes. Hence, the inter-country marriages have become very common nowadays. Marriage may occur in India or abroad. And the marriage can be between an Indian citizen and a foreign citizen or else both the Indian citizens getting married abroad or else one of the partner can be a NRI that is non-resident Indian. So in such a scenario, there are various legal issues will occur with regard to marriage and divorce. There are possible that both the partners, one of them is Indian and another person is a foreign national getting married in a third country. That means in a different country, which law is applicable? Is it the Indian law or the foreign national where he belongs that law or the marriage occurred in a another law? One of the example is one of the Indian citizen got married to a Sri Lankan national in Malaysia. So, which law is applicable now? And the marriage occurred in Malaysia. In such a scenario, if there is a legal dispute with regard to marriage and divorce, how the court should take a decision? A decision. Or else, there is a possible one of the party gets converted to another religion in abroad. Further, in such a scenario, if the divorce proceeding is initiated in India or in abroad, what will be the procedure and how the law takes the recourse? Now let's discuss about factors playing, playing role in inter-country marriage and divorce. The, these are the possibilities you need to understand. The marriage could have occurred either in India or abroad. Please do remember, if the marriage occurs in India, it will be as per the Indian laws, that is, personal laws. That is, either maybe Hindu Marriage Act, if both of them are Hindus, if they are from different, different religion, then it will be from Special Marriage Act. If both are Muslims, it will be from Muslim Marriage Act. So, depending upon the personal laws. Imagine if they get married abroad, either both of them may be Indian or one of them is Indian, and the other is a foreign national aid or NRI. If the marriage occurs, for example, in United Kingdom, whether the laws applicable to UK will prevail or Indian law will prevail. So that is, we need to understand, that is called as jurisdiction. The next question is, the marriage has occurred in India. But however, the petition is filed for divorce either in the Indian court or in the foreign court. Or maybe in a third country where both of them have gone to work. That means the marriage did not occur there. In such a scenario, what will happen? And the other issue is, what is the divorce type? Is it contested? That means one of the parties says, I don't want divorce. Or else, is it a mutual concern divorce? That means both the party will agree for respectable separation. Or else, one party is not attended the court because he is not getting visa or he does not have money. Ex party divorce has taken. These are the three important points need to be considered to discuss further. Let's understand the jurisdiction. Jurisdiction means 
the power of the court to grant a valid degree that means valid jurisdiction or else a decision imagine indian courts have jurisdiction over the indian continent or what we call it as a country which the india is able to control if it is a high court of karnataka it is only the high court of karnataka has a power over the jurisdiction of the boundary of karnataka so you need to understand that very clearly since if the marriage occurs abroad the indian court may not have any kind of jurisdiction over the foreign country so and if the foreign court gives a decision whether is it valid in india so these are the matters the jurisdiction comes into play further marriage occurred outside the india means jurisdiction is beyond indian court and if the divorce is filed in india imagine the foreign national they come to india they got married and the divorce is filed here or the marriage has occurred in the western country and they have filed for divorce here so in such a scenario what will happen further if the marriage has occurred in india then it will be as per the indian laws and the indian court has a right to take decision and it is under the indian jurisdiction suppose if there is a indian and the marriage occurred with a foreigner in a foreign country in such a scenario there is a legislation called as foreign marriage act of 1969 the indian national who got married to a foreign a foreign national in a foreign country should make sure the marriage is solemnized under the foreign marriage act in 1969 and the marriage is registered there that means there is a special officer with regard to this and they have to file a petition telling that we have got married and that should be registered and it invariably will be recognized by the indian courts also although the marriage has occurred in foreign country now let's discuss about what are the factors that play a role in inter country marriage here the marriage has occurred either in india or abroad but a indian national going and staying abroad what are the different factors which play a role if she is a woman she will be isolated she is far from the home she is in an alien land she, do, she does not have any social support economical support she may not know the local language of that country lacks the knowledge about the local police legal system how the court works where to file the complaint where are the ngos she may not know at all and she may not be empowered to navigate that system of course lack of social supports like family friends will be a big challenge further if she is not earning the monetary support is another disabling for a woman and also if she is thrown out of the house the husband throws her out place to take shelter where should she go if she has a mental disorder or a health problem if she does not have money to come back or else if the husband has taken her passport what will happen to her so now let's discuss about the common reasons for conflicts the common reasons for conflicts are invariably one of the spouse will abandon the partner invariably it is the husband who throws out the woman out of the house there may be a domestic violence or else he or she is already married earlier and it is not disclosed the extramarital relationship that means imagine a girl is married to a foreigner or an nri they go there and she later comes to know she had already had married or is having an extramarital relationship further there may be delay in getting the visa or processing the immigration or else even the visa may be rejected further the cultural differences indian culture versus the western culture how the woman is able to navigate the cultural differences the family the which she is entering after some time may not accept her further the woman who has been taken to abroad sexual abuse we have come to know many a time the woman is forced for prostitution in the foreign country and she is completely disabled because she does not have money her passport has taken away all communications are cut and she is used as a domestic maid sex slave so these are the things 
which are very very essential to know before you embark on intercountry marriage further if she has a health problem she does not have any health insurance because she is not the citizen of that country the country wants money for her health care so in such a scenario what will happen think about the pride or the plight of the person who got married to a foreigner and caught in that country further we have also seen drug abuse by the husband or it may be even the wife they start taking alcohol or else the person who is an nri gets married to a indian woman because of the parental pressure later she comes to know he was not interested in marriage at all or she was not interested in marriage at all and he or she is having extramarital relationship or else the husband is unemployed the person who is getting married to a foreign national or to the nri thinks that there is a heaven in that country but when they go there there is climate difference environmental pressure cultural difference no social support no money and if they want to take help also they do not know where to seek help so these are the various reason the indian national getting married to an nri or a foreign national gets into trouble let's look into some of the research what will happen if there is a marriage breaks down there are various studies which have been conducted there is a very clearly a study which was done mental distress predicts divorce over 16 years that means if the marriage occurs with an nri or somebody else of a foreign national and they go there and if there is a mental distress and unable to cope to the foreign country then there will be a huge problem and if she is a woman this impact of divorce or marital separation or a conflict will have a huge toll and invariably it will have a poor mental health and emotional health invariably if she is a older woman that means the marriage has lasted for 10 years and now there is a breakup in such a scenario the woman will enter into depression substance use anxiety disorder suicidal ideas death by suicide are common especially in younger women who are educated they may enter into substance abuse but the emotional toll will be very less now let's discuss about the parental divorce and impact on the children in such a marriage if the child is born and if there is a child custody case imagine whether the laws of that country or indian laws will applicable if the child is born in india or maybe the child is born in the western country in such a scenario which law will be applicable but however one thing you need to understand the impact of divorce on children is huge if the father and mother are fighting what will happen to the children invariably the children will go into depression anxiety alcohol and drug abuse social problems aggressive behavior there are n number of studies available not one or two in huge number of studies are there it will have academic impact the child will have detachment from the family parental alienation syndrome and the child may start having looking for love outside the family teenage pregnancy drug abuse huge number of problems are there especially when there is a parental divorce or a marital conf conflict especially in western country now let's understand how to take precautions before inter country marriage that means one of the partner is a foreigner or a nri or oci who is getting married to a indian national so preparing the for the marriage is very very essential the partner who is going to get married should be aware of the unfamiliar environment the country what is the climate there try to know the husband or the wife who is in the foreign understand about their family understand about their custom religion and also you should know what are the current laws in that country with regard to marriage and divorce and also what are the laws in india that you one need to understand and the person also understand needs to know about the domestic violence of that country imagine if a boy is getting married to a foreigner or an nri and he does not know the domestic violence definition of that country and he shouts at her and she gives a complaint that fellow is in soup so he need to know about the domestic violence law in that country and also in our own country 
and you need to acquire the knowledge of child custody, maintenance law, restitution of conjugal rights, other criminal laws and also Dowry Act, both in India and abroad. At the same time, the person who is going to get married and going to the other country need to know about the language, food, climate, culture, lifestyle, local NGOs. If the person is going to reside in London, that means you need to know what are the local NGOs if she is a woman who are working for women, whether there is a possibility of employment, whether the visa can be taken, even to know whether the employment can be done. So in such a scenario, all these points need to be kept in mind. Further, before you go there, please make sure health insurance is there. Please make sure the marital status of the other person, financial status of the other person, family background, social media. Check for the social media because if he or she is a foreigner or an NRI and if they have a social media, check for that what is happening with them. Whether they are there on social media or not. If they are not on social media, that means there is something hidden because they would have deleted the social media account for the sake of marriage. So you have to be extremely careful. What are the properties owned? What is the immigration status of that person? Whether there is any legal liability of this person whom a Indian is getting married. But however, many times it is very difficult to find. But you need to make sure all these are checked or else attempt should be made to verify all these things. So you need to verify certain things which are very important. Check for the visa and passport of the person whom you are going to get married, especially a foreign national or a NRI or OCI. Check for the voter status, whether there is any alien registration card or else whether they have that foreign registration card, social security number, whether the tax returns are filed, if they are there, can it be considered collected for three years? Because you need to know the income of that person, bank account papers, because that person may be roaming from one place to another place and you do not know whether the identity of the person is real. For that reason, you need to know the bank account, property papers if they are there, employment ID, where he is working, which company, since how many years he is working, if you are able to collect this information and collaterally you can verify those information, that means you are on the right track. And you need to do certain things. You need to register the marriage in India. And also, please do social marriage. Because if there is anything danger or hidden, you will come to know immediately. And you need to register the marriage in India. And please try to take this registration, the marriage certificate. That is, you need to carry that. Keep a copy in the cloud or else in various social media or else maybe in the account and a copy can be given to your friends. And also you need to keep all the paperwork proper. Don't forge the documents for the purpose of visa and job because if something goes wrong, the Western countries will look into every paper in detail. And if you found that you are violating the law and you may not get any help or you may be even child, at the same time, after David from the spouse stating that what is his present marital status. If that is done in India, it is excellent. But however, many people do not do that. I would request if the person is so interested to marry an Indian woman or an Indian boy, that person need to file this affidavit. And also insist on health insurance coverage before arriving to the new overseas residence. Please open a over bank account, credit card, so that they are financially to some extent independent. Before you go to that country, learn the language of that country. Although you may know English, but to navigate, if you are able to learn the local language, it will be excellent because you can seek help from the foreign nationals. And also know the which is the nearest Indian embassy available in that foreign country. And also know the employer of your husband or the wife who is working, if she is working or he is working, so that you can also seek help from that office. At the same time, look for local Indian associations, associations in the foreign country, net for network of Indian citizens in that country. Make all attempts to contact friends and relatives in that country. Even you have not spoken to them, 
it is now high time you need to talk to them because those are the people who are will be helpful in emergency situation you need to consider certain warning signs these are very essential do not take any decision with regard to marriage in haste because a foreign national will come to india and say i want to marry a indian and the marriage occurs within 3 days and the family is so happy that they are getting the alliance from a foreign national or an nri and because of the work or because of the visa or because of various reason they may not be able to check all this credential and at the same time do not blindly trust any bureau marriage bureau i am talking about agent stouts middleman who says i will get your daughter married to a nri or to a person who is staying abroad and in that scenario don't forge any documents especially with regard to degree with regard to residence any other things please don't do that if you do that and if you are caught in the foreign country imagine what will happen and also do not fall for any schemes you need you want to migrate to a country like us and you want to marry a foreign national so that you get the permanent resident status of that country or else for a green card don't get into the schemes if you get into the schemes that means it comes with a danger or it comes with certain amount of risk do not finalize any marriage in secrecy be careful it will turn back do not agree for the marriage in the foreign country imagine a us national wants to marry a indian and he says we will get married in maybe indonesia bali it looks very attractive imagine marriage in indonesia that is in bali and he is a foreign national us and you are a indian which law is applicable even if there is a marriage in bali please make sure the marriage registration occurs in india first and then reception or anything can occur in the other country and even if you are getting married in exotic place in a foreign national or a foreign country make sure before the marriage or after the marriage please come and register in india because you are of indian national at the end of the day your country will try to help you suppose if you are going to get married in foreign make sure and you are going to settle there please register your marriage under foreign marriage act of 1960 india please contact the embassy and try to find out the details procedure how to do it and also please make sure that the passport is with you or else it is in a safe place imagine if your husband is a foreign national and he takes away your passport and says i've lost the passport and you are caught in that country and you have you are in you are at the mercy of your husband or maybe your spouse was lost deliberately your passport or is hiding the passport you cannot leave that country and you may not be able to prove your identity also and in such scenario imagine you need to hide from the police also and you cannot seek help even from the ngo for that reason keep at least one copy or a copy of the passport maybe with your friends families on online maybe in the cloud and when you get married publicize the marriage in all social media and please have a social marriage that means publicize it tell about they are getting married let it be on facebook everywhere if there is anything is there you will come to know and you need to keep all your original documents password in safe custody just because you are married to a smart guy or a handsome guy from nri or maybe foreign country do not hand over your mass card original degree certificates marriage certificate to him with regard to passport you need to be very careful if there is id card bank account credit card please don't give your pin if he wants money you withdraw do not give your credit card debit card unless you have stayed with him for 10 to 15 years you know that person very well many women who get married and they have good amount of money they go abroad the husband takes away all the bank accounts credit cards debit cards this woman does not have any money although she may be earning and also make sure you don't give your social media password also to your husband or to the wife 
because these are all invitation for trouble. At the same time, please do know about the domestic violence as per the foreign country. What is the definition? What are the laws? What are the punishment if the domestic violence is proven in that country? Now let's discuss about the Supreme Court of India's decision with regard to Indian getting married to a foreign national or else Indian married in India but settled abroad and if the case is there in India, what will happen? This is one of the landmark decision done by the Supreme Court of India. Here, both the parties get married in Tirupati. Both are Indians, husband and wife. They go to New Orleans, US. They stay there, but the husband files a divorce petition both in Tirupati court, that is where the marriage occurred, and also where he is staying, that is in US, that is in the Missouri, US. There, as you know, in Indian courts, the divorce takes maybe 5 years, 10 years, sometimes decades. New Orleans gave, the court gave the decision of divorce. The wife could not attend the US court because of various reasons. Obviously, she is maybe may not be earning and she cannot pay for the costly case in US. In the absence of the wife, the Circuit Court of Missouri, US, passed a degree of dissolution of marriage on the ground that the marriage was irretrievably down. That means it is irrevocably broken down. On that ground, the divorce was given. But however, the wife was currently now in India, in Tirupati. She challenged the degree of the US court on two important points, telling that the US court did not was not a competent court for the Indian marriage to be dissolved in a foreign country or a foreign court. And she also said that this irrevocable retrieval breakdown of marriage is not a ground for divorce as per Hindu Marriage Act. So these are the two important contentions she also made and also the husband had submitted some documents which are all Xerox copies. They were not original. So the challenge that these are also not original documents. So in front of the Indian court, especially the Supreme Court, it had two important things. One, whether the international court's decision should be recognized or not. The marriage was solemnized in India and the divorce was given by a US court. Should it be recognized or not? That was the first question. Now, if we want to recognize what should be the guidelines to recognize those marriage or the divorce. In this court decision, the court clearly said that foreign judgment, imagine if the marriage has occurred as per the Indian laws and the foreign judgment shall not be recognized if it has not been pronounced by a court of competent jurisdiction. That means the US court does not have a competent jurisdiction over the Indian laws. Or any other court should be held to be court without jurisdiction unless both the party voluntarily and unconditionally subject, the, subject themselves to the jurisdiction of that court. That means, imagine the marriage has occurred in India. And both the parties, husband and wife, are in US. And both the parties contest voluntarily. And they go for mutual divorce in the foreign country. And in such a scenario, that kind of degree will be recognized in India. But if the, one of the party does not submit to the foreign jurisdiction of that court, then that jurisdiction will not be considered. But however, there are ex exceptions to this rule. What is the exception to the rule? The rule is the foreign court do not have jurisdiction over Indian marriage or divorce. That's what the law is. But there are certain exceptions. What is the exception? If the foreign court gives a divorce based upon the matrimonial laws of India, that means it is based upon Indian laws. That is very clear. And that court should be where the permanent residence of one of the family, one of the party it is there. In such a scenario, it can be considered. That means the judgment it should be based on Indian matrimonial laws. Further, both the parties should voluntarily submit to the jurisdiction of the foreign court. That means both of them have gone to the court. 
the petitioner and the respondent they have fought the court in the court of maybe foreign land there it was discussed based upon indian law and the foreign law and they have accepted the court's decision that is recognized in india but again there is a third important point where the respondent consents to the grant of relief although the jurisdiction of the forum is not in accordance with the provision of the matrimonial law of the parties that means imagine a indian woman got married to a foreign national of uk but they are staying in africa now they have submitted themselves to the foreign of your african court for divorce although the jurisdiction of neither the indian or the uk nationals do not fall in the africa because the divorce is filed there and now both the parties submit there for the african law and the divorce is as per the indian law then that degree will be considered valid so these are the exceptions which have been considered as per the supreme court to conclude my dear friends or in court's decision usually the jurisdiction is not considered however it is considered under certain circumstances one if it fulfills the matrimonial laws of india or the personal laws of india or special marriage act and divorce if that fulfills it will be considered and both the parties should have submitted themselves voluntarily voluntarily to the jurisdiction of the foreign country and even if it is not the jurisdiction both the parties should voluntarily go and argue in that court of law that is very important that means consent should be voluntarily and both the respondent petitioner went to the court in the foreign court and they are able to argue and they are satisfied with the judgment in such a scenario those judgments will be considered valid in the court of law in india to conclude my dear friends before embarking for inter country marriage please do not hurry please do not hesitate haste and immediately get married please do background check marriage to occur in indian indian jurisdiction is very essential make sure the marriage is registered in india and if it is in the foreign location the marriage has occurred make sure it is registered under foreign marriage act of 1969 and if she is a indian woman and she is going to stay abroad with the foreign national or nri please empower that woman with the safety nets such as she has made make sure that she has kept our all original documents with the relatives or friends she has a bank account which the husband does not have access to it the debit card or credit card she has access she has access to indian embassy she knows the local relatives friends she has a good social support network in such a scenario then only you consider for inter country marriage and please keep in touch with her or him because these are all very sensitive matters and many a time it may enter into a disaster so before you embark on inter country marriage be cautious thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe